Oh, we're just doing some tests. If you don't have a drink already, you guys can get some Muskoka Brewery refreshments at the front. Also, thanks everybody for coming, obviously. Um, the washroom is at the door to the left, if uh, you don't already know. Um, and then, yeah, raffle tickets are five bucks. Uh, we've got some wicked hook A swag, like this vest. Uh, and then we have the Filson prize pack. We're also giving away the print of the tattoos that Tim was doing today. Um, a Wrangler trout xl so it's a six weight trout setup and the reddington rise reel and a bunch of other awesome little stuff from uh hook a uh which is great and uh yeah and then kevin what was what's the filson prize like there's the shirt but then is it insulated the ice tote no no oh, okay okay also everybody this is kevin he runs the filson store here with his team um, uh, Allie, who kind of organized this event too, was, couldn't be here. Um, but, uh, yeah, they've been an awesome help and a supporter of our events and, uh, our fundraisers and stuff over the last two years, which is awesome. So thanks for having us, man. Yeah. We're just doing mic tests though. Just doing mic tests. Just doing a couple of mic tests. If anybody needs the washroom, it's in the back to the left. Yeah. Yeah. Check, check, check. Sounds good. And check, check, check. Mics, mics are good. Mics are good. Mics are good. And everybody, this is Mitch. He's gonna be doing your. He's gonna be taking your video. <laughs> Just tell him you don't want to be in it. If you don't want to be in it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're rocking. We're rocking here. You're recording? We're, we are on. We are recording now. Wow. Look at that. We've got set up. We did it. We pulled it together all. <laughs> nice job, Mitch. Yeah, ditto. Yeah, right back. Right back nice. Right back. Um, 
Yeah. Okay. Well, we're live. Let's just do this. Let's then. do this thing. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of SoFly. Yeah. Live. Yeah. Live. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Thank you, audience. Uh, okay, we okay. need a few more beers, I guess. We need a few more beers. <laughs> we're very, very excited to be recording here live today. This is a special show because we're down at Filson in Toronto on Queen Street, recording live uh, and streaming to YouTube. So if you're tuning in on YouTube, thank you so much. It's going to be a fun show. We've got lots of stuff going on today. We're obviously, we're chatting with the amazing Fred Campbell from Hook A. Woo! Fred, so- thank you so much for coming down. Uh, we've also got prizes we're going to be giving away, and we're going to be uh, we're going to be talking all kinds of fun, fishy things today. Totally, yeah. Um, I think first of all, thanks to the team here at Filson Toronto, Kevin and uh, you know his team has been hosting us for the last basically twenty four hours. Um, our pal Tim has been tattooing yes. people all day long, and all of those pro like he hasn't stopped. He started at eleven. It is now six p.m. Uh, and he tattooed all day, uh, which is great. A hundred percent of the money raised from the tattoos and the raffle is going to the Ontario River Alliance, yep. um, which is a partner that uh, we work with. And also Rob is from Drift Outfitters is in the crowd here. We either so, a benefactor of uh, of all of our fundraisers. Yeah. And they're, they're, they're a wicked organization, so happy to give them the money. Um, yeah. But yeah, we're going to, you know, we're going to get into it. So yeah, thanks everybody. Obviously, thanks Reddington and Hookay for all the raffle prizes. And we're going to give those away at the end. Um but I think without further ado, let's let's announce the guest of honor. Let's announce the guest of honor. Yeah, okay. for sure. Well, we've got a very special guest here that's all the way from Quebec today. We've got Fred Campbell of Hook Gay. Fred, how are you? What's up? Yeah. How's it going? I'm good, man. I just still can't believe it. Yeah. Like, we've, I've been following you guys for so long, and I, I remember... I think even when I went on your podcast and I came to this store, I'm like, man, this is the brand, man. Yes, yeah, I remember. <laughs> and we're here sitting down, man. Here we are yeah. in a really beautiful space. I mean, it is a cool place to do a live podcast. It's it's just so nice, the skylights and all the wood and the beautiful clothing. It's super cozy. Yeah, yeah. the first time, uh, you know, Fred, you came on the show, I think it was like episode 20 in the 20s, and now we're in episode 163. <laughs> yeah. Actually, also, we should say, this episode is going to come out on March 17th, so tomorrow. Yep. It's going to be available you know, on all of our channels, YouTube, Spotify, Apple, and all that stuff. So if you're not here, you're obviously going to listen to it. (laughs) That's right. That's right, indeed. Um, Why don't we just kick this off with Fred? You know, like, uh, obviously, you've been down here for the Sportsman Show. Um, How's that been? How's the Sportsman Show been? I think it's, I think it was great. Yeah, because like, I'm used to being like in a space where we always feel comfortable with fly fishing, conservation, catch and release, like-minded people. Yeah. But now we go outside of our of our comfort zone and we're trying to show people that they got to approach it in a different way. Yeah. So we set up a nice booth. We're there with some great collaborators, Yeti. Yeah. And like you guys, we were there to raise money, create awareness. And yesterday we raised $12,000 for Ducks Unlimited. Yo! Yeah. Oh my God. Round of applause for Ducks <laughs> That's Unlimited. That's good, man. That's really good. Yeah, it's amazing. So even though the main majority of the clientele maybe is an aging clientele, I think there is hope and we need to get involved. Yeah. Everybody, like to say, we need to change the way we hunt, the way we fish, and fly fishing is way ahead. We're already yeah. releasing since like 1940. Yeah, that's <laughs> so. a good point. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I <laughs> mean, yeah. it's pretty cool. Like we when, we, when we were first approached with this idea, we were like, oh man, who could be our guest? And then Rob at Drift was hosting the I-4, and then you emailed us, and you're like, hey, I'm going to be in town this weekend. Should we hang out? I was like, yeah, we could hang out or... Do you want to do a live podcast yeah. at the Filson store? <laughs> Maybe we hang out at the Filson store and do a live podcast. Yeah, exactly. yeah, it, it, see, it kind of seems unreal because like even there's even a guy like a guy from the Gas Pape and it's like, he's he's here this weekend, but he's here for a music show tomorrow. I forget the big big artist. Yeah. and he told his girlfriend, "Yeah, it's gonna be a weekend non fly fishing weekend," and he's sitting and he's like, "Oh man, there's an event at Drift. <laughs> there's UK at the show, and there's this tonight." <laughs> and so <laughs> that worked out really. Yeah, okay. it's, it's a great weekend to be in Toronto if you like fly fishing. Definitely. I will say we had a guest today. He was at your booth at the Sportsman Show yesterday, found out about the tattoos, came here, got tattooed, which is amazing. Yeah, I think that's so, so cool. Like yeah, that. So, so thanks for that. Yeah. This is a, what a wicked weekend. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, I think we're going to talk a bit about, uh, because of the I 4 tomorrow, we'll talk about your films in the I 4 But I mean, you know, maybe we'll just talk a little bit about OK and, you know, since... It's been six years since you've been on the show and maybe a bit about, uh, you know, how hook has been going in the last six years and, you know, how coming out of the pandemic, like, yeah, I mean, now, man, 
you're in like your brand's in sale like it's 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 blown up it's yeah awesome. yeah i think the, the the thing about hookade was like a, a a company for me that it was my translating my passion into a brand i work in the like marketing filming i did a lot of stuff for like 15 years and then i translate and say i'll show people what i want them to see and build hookade and uh today like it, it grew but it grew like uh, organically i find I set a mission statement when it started the brand and it never changed. So now we're just in a, in a space where I, I wouldn't imagine I would be in that space. But it's the same as like being here tonight. Good things happen when you you stay true to your yourself. And we didn't we didn't like accept a big fucking a car company yeah. sponsor. We never did weird stuff. We always stayed true to who we are. Yeah. And that's what brought me to travel everywhere, meet amazing people and yeah. just like here this happened like that and i mean i was in labrador uh, this summer and just beside me miraculously is yvonne schwinar from patagonia i'm like what? <laughs> cool. so, just fishing yeah he was there at that <laughs> like, he was there yvonne, at, at the lodge you know so <laughs> that's awesome i mean at the end of the day uh the thing for who was to stay uh, true to who he wanted to be it's like uh, put forward uh, fly fishing, conservation, get into the hunting and the great outdoor space. And it just happened organically. Kind of, it's like, I saw it like as a a tree or something. You you put a seed in the earth and if you treat it well, it's going to grow uh, to a certain like uh, level, but it can't grow too fast. Yeah. It's not like total expansion. It's just slow, sustained growth. Yeah. Yeah. So what was the original like idea with Hook A when you started? Like what was the... The goal, what were you hoping to do? I was hoping to fish. <laughs> <laughs> Same. Yeah. I definitely, <laughs> definitely wanted to fish a lot, but uh, the goal was to take my skill set, what I had learned for the past 15 years, like touring with Red Bull, doing some films, the snowboard, the skateboard industry, and finding a niche. The goal is, is to like find a place where there was hope or needed help. So it started with the Atlantic salmon fishing. Like When I saw that fish and those rivers, I was like, man, I want to dedicate my life to that. Yeah. And uh, we made some films. And then I said, how can we build a community? So, and also making films and just people watching it doesn't create any revenue. Yeah. I couldn't invest anything to build a brand. Right. So then I said, let's make some clothes. And we got a like a super big like TV contract. Yeah. It all came together like miraculously, but... The main goal was to create a community of like-minded people. And me, it was to have like the most days outside on the river to better understand like the wilderness and try to do my part, I, I can say, and better understanding it. Yeah. 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 Okay. So before we go more into Hook A and, and your most recent film, why don't we just like, we talked about this like way back when we had you on the show, but why don't we talk a little bit about, you know, how you got into fishing and hunting and where you're from and kind of, you know, a bit of your history. Yeah, I was uh, I got into it when I was like three or four years old, and that was through my grandfather and my mother and my uncles. They were born like in the countryside, like the right. true authentic lifestyle, uh, raised on a farm, yeah. fish and hunt for food and yeah, for passion, but also like it was a necessity to go out there. So they showed that to me, and I grew into it. But you know, when you're like uh, you get into adolescence, you. You don't really know where you want to go. And then I, I fell in love with skateboarding. Yeah. I kind of lost myself in there. But I would always go back to nature. And that's where I, I really felt good. I'm kind of sort of a TD, ADHD, like yeah. always full of fucking ideas. Yeah. And when I went in the river, I felt good. I said, I need to find a way to go to go back there. Yeah. And I always would go back. But I, I, I had built this production company, skateboard, snowboard films. And then we started to tour with Red Bull, do big events, and like the, the corporate, like a production yep. company world got to me. And so I said, I, I gotta hustle, I gotta build this company. Yeah. So when it when we made enough money, then I said, Fuck man, I'm going back to the to the roots of what I want to do. And that's when I was able to create. And thank God I started I started the idea when I when I was old and uh, older and mature. I would have fucked it up if my first idea would have been hooky, would have been a, sh a shitty like idea or brand. I would have made mistakes. I would have, would have been, I would have been dumb. I would have been young, and yeah. so I did it for a place where I, I, I was mature enough to have an idea, set set like the, 
the foundations and say this is what we're doing and we're not gonna we're not gonna fuck it up you know in quebec where you were growing up and fishing and learning to fish with your family like what was special about that area and like what had you hooked about all that oh nice it's just like the thank you the silence you know yeah the silence the the, the fact that when you're in a just here i, I mean I, I took an uber to come here and i'm like holy <laughs> shit yeah. it's like quebec is something but here you like, times 10 and you're like <laughs> if you live in the, all this this noise it's it's pretty hectic so for me the nature the fishing the hunting it's a place where you're by yourself yeah for sure you can reflect upon a lot of things and you feel good and i feel that's the i don't know it's it's a way to see yeah there's still real stuff like when you're tracking a moose in the wild there's no nothing fake about that so <laughs> no definitely not <laughs> yeah. when you hook up with a fish and you tie the fly and you swing it i mean so it's it's that connection to the to real things that uh, that yeah. always inspired me and the more i was doing like the like design work and i would get a big contract then i would do it and the it would air on tv and either it would go good or bad and have a good client and then this other young company would start charge less and they'd get the deal and i'd be like, what am i fighting against what am i actually doing then you go back to nature like man right it adds like, clarity yeah. to everything in perspective and yeah it's yeah. like uh, okay for me is to reconnect with nature and, and not only nature but also like I'm, i've always been inspired by the indigenous people to to understand there's people who set foot here way before us yeah they were connected to the land yeah. they were connected to nature they knew what the word sustainable meant and their stories are so inspiring like the bedtime stories for the kids is like all the importance of the animals and all that so all that came to mind and i said man i i can do it and i didn't i didn't i didn't like uh steer away from the yeah and it brought me here you know yeah, <laughs> i don't know yeah 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 that's wicked it's yeah i mean you know mitch is in advertising i'm in production too and it's like yeah you do so much work for other clients it's it is nice to realize you're like wait a minute why don't i do this for my brand and you know right. that's definitely something when we started so fly was like okay it was like your design was always awesome and it didn't look like other design in the fishing space so it was definitely inspirational yeah. for us so, so it shows like that totally. background of design and production quality, 100%. You know? yeah it's awesome. and it's it, today is even like what's what blows my mind is that like i also it's like march is the month of shows and we said yeah let's just let's go man we need yeah. to see the people yeah. it's our first time after covid that we're showing up in shows and like you see this kid he's 16 years old he take up all his courage and he comes running up to me in a show and he's shaking man he's like <laughs> man you're inspiring me i, I watch your stuff for the past five years i'm going to the gaspy man i'm being yeah, an yeah, atlantic yeah. salmon guy his mother is there she starts to cry and i'm like hey buddy man That's come cool. here and i sign a book and say read this man and don't steer away from your passion so he said that's awesome that's that's what that's why we do it but from the digital aspect of it yeah. We don't know who's watching our stuff no. so that's why we that's need to go and meet with people be here like it's <laughs> we're doing a podcast and there is real people like, yeah no it's that's awesome, cool man, man. yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah it's super cool yeah. i feel you man like uh i remember like when we start like to talk about the soul fly thing like yilma who i don't know yilma's on here is it yilma no um <laughs> yilma! <laughs> <What's up? laughs> he was like obsessed with the hook a design and he's like getting into fly fishing he's like oh yeah man okay like I'm like, I know like, this stuff's really cool. And then he got in and like, let's do something, you know? And he's like, you know, so it was like an inspiration in that sense too, from the design world. Like, um, how did you, you know, like w get into design and just branding in the world of like business? Like, what was that kind of progression? Like, well, what I did is when I, the good idea I had when I started my business, uh, I didn't even know about design, but I, like, I had filmed like skateboarding with a like big VHS thing. And I, yeah. So I, I, I went into a business administration, but the marketing side. So yep. design for me is marketing. At the end of the day, you, I, I was being telling stories of like to have a logo, have a presence. And, uh, and then I started to play around with computers and then started to film more and more and more. And when you do a skateboard film, you need to do like a cover for your film. Yeah, You need to decide what, what logo you're going to put. So that's, I said, man, it was starting. I remember when I... If I'm not mistaken, like when did after effect? It's like 1999, 2000. Mm -hmm, 2000. Yeah. So I yeah. remember we, like we we were moving stuff to do intros and films with Flash because After right. Effects <laughs> didn't yeah. exist. Yeah. So I, what's good is that I saw it like uh, evolve, being born. Like 
I, I, we saw we saw Facebook arrive. We saw Instagram arrive. I saw all of that. So Are I come s- from a yeah. I come <laughs> from a like I was doing snowboard films we were going on tour and i said how are we gonna communicate with people i said man you can buy a phone <laughs> so i bought a, a flip phone yeah and i said fuck you can all you guys you can use it call your girlfriend call your mom doesn't matter like yeah it, it works yeah and then you remember when you could get a like a seven thousand dollar bill a phone <laughs> <laughs> like, because oh, you sent five texts it doesn't <laughs> exist that anymore but it was like all yeah. the oh i was scared of it yeah so i think all all that it that's why I have an understanding of design today because I, I kind of saw it uh, grow and, and and I learned it all from scratch. Yeah, editing, adding music to a video, like Illustrator, After Effects, and yeah. I already had all those ideas of making magazines and all that type of stuff. And the culture of skateboarding and snowboarding is already connected to art. There was always that yeah for art sure. form to it. And the rest, like all the music videos and the commercial work, it's like we we all I I sell, I tell a lot of people like don't quit your day job. It's yeah. when you start to have a passion, so you're not you're not fucking up like your your passion. Yeah, because money is gonna be an, an issue at a certain point sure. if you yeah. if you jump into your passion too fast. So yeah, I always had the side of a my passionate work and yeah, my day job was the corporate work I did, but right. I learned a lot a lot from it. So now let's say I. I'm left by myself with a computer. I understand, like, I, yeah, I, I'm not, right. I'm never going to be as good as the designers that work for me now. Yeah. But we laugh sometimes when, when something goes wrong, we say, oh shit, Campbell Design, he, he, <laughs> he tried it out. So, <laughs> I mean, Who gave Fred in design? <laughs> no, but I, I know how it works and I, I can have an opinion on a, on a, yeah. on a design because, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, it's, Time goes by so fast. I, I remember and I, when I reflect upon it, like my first films were VHS. A lot of people here don't even, had even manipulated a VHS maybe. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I've, I've, I used to edit audio on tape. Yeah. Like how did tape. that work? I, re- I remember. Like, and when you had to do, do a fade, you had to cut the tape on an angle yeah. so that the machine would read. It, uh, but I never edited video on tape. But crazy. I remember I, real, I had real? two decks <laughs> with my, my footage and one in the middle that recorded. But I don't remember how I added the music, but it was some weird thing. You could put it on the... T- like everything was live on tape. Right. Crazy. I was thinking wow. about like how they did supers <laughs> in analog. I'm like, I have no idea. <laughs> I have some kind of crazy yeah, stuff. <laughs> but yeah, it's... Uh, yeah, so I, I really needed to get back to like the reconnecting with the nature. I went... Yeah. Like, can you imagine like at a certain point in time, we were touring 26 countries for the Red Bull Freestyle, which is a DJ competition yeah. around the world. It's, that's really far away from what I'm doing today. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, for real. I needed, we, we brought it to the next level to be, for me, I needed to. I needed to go back. So. What <laughs> yeah, like, was your first film, like for Hook A? Like, do you remember? That? I remember, like, we, we there's a ton of little things that, that we did, but the first one is, like, people... I got a contract way back, like maybe 15 years ago to yeah. film some. I some feel like stuff. I remember from the first podcast we did together, you told the story like, we're, we're going to Patagonia. Yeah. That, and you're like, and you're like, you're holding the camera like, this is the crazy. F- this is the crazy, but this is also the future. Like, right. Yeah. We have to take care of this kind of thing. But but before that, it was just like, hey, you, you need to meet these guys. It wa- it wasn't common to to have five people who fly fish like to meet and be young and cool and have fun. And yeah. right. we all had different backgrounds. And I I filmed ourselves uh, fly fishing. I think it was at the end of May. It was there was the salmon coming down the river, but there were also the fresh ones coming in. So just filmed it, and uh, it was just a bunch of guys having fun. Double hand rods had just started. Yeah, I put it online and it. For me, it was like, man, this is awesome. Like, blog shared it, Arvis shared it, and it, it was for me like, wow, man. But at the end of the day, it was like, yeah, we got a lot of views, but how is it going to translate it? Right. How is my idea going to come to life? And we found the name, and then we made a logo because I had my production company. Yeah. Then I right. made a hat, and then I did another film before the, the Patagonia one, just like going to fish, catching a salmon or something. And then people said, uh, where can we buy the hat? So then it started to reflect upon me. I said, what if we create clothes and we are dressed in a certain way, whereas the only way you can get it is through me. Right. And if you watch <laughs> the film, so it started to... The wheels turn. Yeah. But yeah. I said, uh, how do awesome. we get, like, how do we do it? So I look at a lot of brands and 
that thank God that my business partner kept touring with Red Bull in the transition. Yeah. So he was making money and I was spending it. And he was like, <laughs> yeah. you fucking years. idea, man. You're going to make a business out of fly fishing? Nobody does fly fishing. Yeah. So that's the goal. Yeah. Somebody always told me, if nobody's doing it, there's an opportunity. For sure. So yeah. it's, it was to grow from a niche and to see where nobody else, no, nobody saw hope. I saw some. And I come from the snowboard and skateboard industry yep. where everything needed to be fucking tight. And mm -hmm. yeah. said, why nobody getting interested in like this space? Like quality images, quality photos. Yeah. yeah. People that are like uh, very inclined to the sport and yeah, for sure. inspiring. That's where it all that's where it all started. But it, it it was a lot of work. I needed to I took a risk, like I know this guy who has a he's like he's really good in product design. Yeah, but how much does it cost to hire him? And it's like big salaries and yeah. right. start. So everybody who wants to start a brand today, I'm like, okay, buddy, man, but get ready, get, buckle get, up. Get ready, man. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's the hardest thing you have decided to do, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah for sure. Because it's 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 not you who decides. At the yeah. end of the day, you need to incorporate the public into what you are doing. And either they fall in love with it or not. But for yeah. me, it's the goal it was to stay authentic throughout what we do yeah. and put forward the people who decided to live off their passion. Yeah. Right. So it, that's how it all yeah, it all sense. came together. But the first, then came the Patagonia one. We yeah. didn't. I didn't understand what what type of traction we were getting. So I filmed that. I put it together. It was really, I thought it was good, but I, I said, What no. year was this? 2014. Okay. Now, maybe 2013. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Between 2012 and 2000. And then today I looked back and I said, Man, if I would have sent that to like a film festival, they would have taken it, man. Right. <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> but so many crazy things happened after that. Like uh, just crazy opportunities. Like another crazy one is, I don't know if you know, like, ever heard about Cirque du Soleil? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, a, it's really big. Like, it's a big company that makes shows. And oh, yeah. The guy who had that, he, he liked to fly fish and he, oh. he just made a cold call and he said, You know what? I want to show you the North. I said, What? Why? Because I think you guys are going to be really good. That was sick. So then he invited us and said, Can I film? So that was the film on Gava. Oh, that, okay. Because oh. I, I could have never financed that, man. Like, going in a helicopter. That's when I saw the, like, the, the true North. And that's when, before the drones. We yeah, opened yeah, yeah. the door of the helicopter. And <laughs> shoot <out> the door. <laughs> Pre drone. Yeah, and then I'm like, well, for like a thousand bucks, you, you can do a shot. And yeah. it was, it was, it was like uh, several things back to back. And yeah, like I said to everybody, it's like if you turn right, uh, and like every every little thing you do, uh, the, you don't know what's gonna happen next. But when you do something good, something. Right. Else happens and uh, so it just builds on itself. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's not easy now that you know. I mean, you've grown, you've grown a lot, but do, was there a point where it felt like it was getting easier? Yeah. Now. Now. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. <man. laughs> like to be honest, like uh, I took the plane to go to the booth, and I arrived, and the booth was set up, and I just solid, right. solid team in place. Right. And yeah. I get the space now to. Uh, so my brain can be clear and I can, I can, in, like, they don't mind to say like, buddy, man, you, take it easy, man. You got, your role is that now today and do that. So it, it's just a privilege to have a team now where we're, we're 20, I think maybe 21 at, my next in, in the business. Yeah. And, 21? Uh, yeah. Everybody, <laughs> like, it's, it's not that it's big, but everybody, uh, I meet a lot of entrepreneurs. There's a lot of business people in the fly fishing industry yeah. and everybody mm -hmm. said you, you can never be uh, better than the team. Yeah. So it's uh, like there's also it's, it's not it's cheesy, but like teamwork make the dream work. So yeah. it's all about my team now. So I I can be in a meeting and and share the vision, yeah. but I'm not there like 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 doing it. Yeah. I, I'm just sharing my vision and I'm I'm out there. I go in the wild. I come back. Say we need to do this. We need to do that. I was here today and I'm like there is opportunity. Then I see the end game. I said these shows what we're doing right now. We need to bring it to the next level. I this company. So we're just connecting. Yeah. Connecting yeah. dots and yeah, for sure. like uh, leading by example. It's like that. That's so even there may be like three or four kids that came today and this, that they're saying, man, this is what I want to do. And I want to be yeah. solid work in, uh, in this industry. And I, this resonates. Uh, yeah. 
like and the word conservation didn't even exist and when it was my grandfather yeah. oh for sure they didn't yeah. care yeah. They didn't even yeah. understand it yeah. so now it, need, it needs to be part of the the future of 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 yeah. everything so yeah it's all it's like these are the good days and uh but to get here it's, it's like a lot of 24 work. Yeah. years yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> 24 like, yeah it's uh, you look back to it and nobody can achieve uh, great things without work Yeah. Work is the key to anything. I, I believe truly, like, yeah, luck sure. doesn't exist. Yeah. And like, fishing, it does sometimes. Maybe sometimes. <laughs> Only <laughs> luck with me. Yeah. <laughs> I have no idea what I'm It's doing It's exclusively luck with you. Exclusively luck. With fishing. <laughs> That's a, <laughs> wow, really? A fish? Okay. <laughs> yeah, how do I realize that? Yeah. yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, I mean, it must be. Yeah, I mean, we went to the show yesterday. Yeah. It was awesome. Yeah, it the was. booth looked great. Yeah. I mean, and, like, it was funny. We were there and, like, Susan came from the Marguerite River. Like it was like all these people we knew just right at that one time. And yeah. that was like, you know, we started doing those, you know, actually with Rob from Drift, we started doing the yeah. the flies and flights pre-pandemic where we would go to breweries and do fly tying nights for people that did fish and mainly for people who didn't just yeah. to see if people were interested. And that was cool because we started seeing, like you said, you don't know who's following you. You don't know who's listening to you. So meeting the people you know, was yeah. awesome. And then obviously the pandemic was horrible <laughs> yeah. for seeing people. And then yeah. after that, we, you know, doing events, we love it. We yeah. try to do one a month, whether it's, we partner with someone like Jordan and do an ev educational night or someone like drift and do an educational night or film festival or, you know, or we partner with our brewery friends and do a yeah. party, you know, and it's just fun. There, there is something intangible about meeting other other humans when, like, when you lose that and then you get back to it. Now we're getting back into, like, events and all that stuff. Yeah. And we and my team at night, it's like, we, we feel we got something some sort of going. energy. Yeah. We're not yeah. the same tired as, because we met so many people all, like, telling good well, it fills things. fills you up, you know? It fills like, you yeah. up, like, good, good comments about the gear, about the brand, about... Yeah. Like, man, I want to do this. I want to go there. And then you can say to people, all your dreams, buddy, man, just just go for it. So I right now I'm I'm totally energized from of being like eight days in shows. Yeah. And of course, I, I I'm anxious to go back in down the river, yep. but it's not like a, a hassle meeting people like yeah, yeah, giving you good comments. I mean, yeah, yeah. who yeah. doesn't like that? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Well, speaking like, of like dreams and, you know, like going to really awesome places and, you know, we talk about your first shoot and then where you're at now. Like um, we've got one comment here from Andrew who said he loved the first hook a short that he saw when you went up to the Salmon River with Jeff B and, and David Bishop. Um, so, you know, what what's your like favorite expedition that you guys have done over the years? If you had to pinpoint it before we speak before about we the start film, getting into the before we start getting into your film. Yeah, maybe it's this one. I don't know. There are there are. There are so many. I can't. I can't even like to have a favorite one would be to like say there was one that was my less favorite, or one that really or one that changed things. Maybe or... like aside from the very first one, like maybe there's one where you're like, oh, I now just I need like, to be more. Uh, or you're man, on it, and they, you're like, oh, this is crazy. What's I happening? mean, there's been there's been so many inspiring trips to there's been trips to Sweden, like the yep. culture over there to say like, man, there's places on earth where it's not broken. Yeah. Like, uh, <laughs> Beautiful. I mean, the connection yeah. over there, like we go to a, on some land and it's the Sami people that are the indigenous people. And we, this guy is giving us permission to go on his land. And thank you, sir. Thank you for yeah. having us here. The the caribou are free roaming. I mean, That's crazy. The, 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 the mindset is totally different. Like I need to bring some of this back home. They don't hunt for the trophy. They hunt for the meat. They hunt. Right. There's, there's good stuff happening everywhere uh, uh, around the earth. And the, just uh, that was great. And also, um, The other one, it's of course, it's weird because it's about it's about it's about a a big fish, but it's also about like a a place where I I gave myself a challenge, like to to catch a big Atlantic salmon and a moose and harvest a moose on, on yeah. the shore of the Restigouche River, where Huke started in the first show. Yeah. So I went back there two years ago in New Brunswick, where they have a I find they have a great management for the Atlantic salmon, like. Yeah. I'll catch and release, close the river when the river gets warm and hunting is only one week and you need to win a draw. And I mean, they haven't lost all that love to it. And I go on the Restigouche River, like the, the project come to life and I'm on that river and yeah. my buddy says, hey man, you go, you go this morning. It's I feel it's right, man. And I swing a fly, man, and I catch like man, 48 inch salmon. I'm like, 
Right on. <laughs> the river, the river given back to me, and it, yeah. to this day, this salmon. It's, I haven't published that yet, but it, it's it's given me so much like more luck and visibility, and it's like, why did it bite on my line, and why did my buddy say you go first? Right. And and the guy has been fishing for thirty years. The guy who was with me said, I've never seen a fish like that, man. What? And I'm That's like, amazing. this is meant to be. And then the year, uh, this in September. Then it was the same thing with the moose. I I ended up being guided by an indigenous guy, who when he when he left to go into the forest, I saw him like give a kiss on this. He had like a necklace, but it was the ashes of his of his father wow. looked up in the sky. And me, I was like, man, can't can't believe it. Like my dad, he died in a car crash hitting a moose, and I was like, this is crazy. And oh, then wow. I ended up harvesting the moose, the salmon. So. Wow. That trip is because it's like emotional and it's, it's yeah. like, why did it happen there? Yeah. But at the rest of the day, like anything that is wild, sure. untouched yeah. and has a great history. I love it. Anything that's been tampered with too much. Like it's, you kind of feel like I wish I would have seen it how it used to be. Yeah. But everything that has to do with like Nunavik, Northern Quebec, yeah. where yeah. you feel you're like, stepping on where nobody else ever set foot yeah. yeah those are my i get addicted to those places because at the end of the day there's less and less of those so yeah for those sure those are my favorite favorite trips oh, i mean i feel that i mean like yeah, yeah it's pretty i mean like even just those moments it's like fishing and hunting and outdoors just in general like has something it does like that it's funny how it has that way of really creating emotional moments where you can think about your own life and the people that you have in your life and like the moose story of the guy with kissing the neck like that's so yeah, amazing man. yeah i believe in lucky star like my dad passed away when i was like 16 and everybody said you're filled with luck man every the, the, mm. the, like the the animals they come to you and the fish they come to you man. and like man this because i i believe in karma i believe in this 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 strength like i say it if you treat it good it's going to give you back mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. if you you shoot, shoot an animal and you you hurt it, you shoot it in the head, you you disrespect the fish. You're not gonna get rewarded in in a, in that mm -hmm. way. And it comes from all this this meeting of constantly meeting with the like uh, indigenous people and the, uh -huh. they, those stories. Like even the moose, they're like, if you if you like dress good and you go in the forest and you respect the land, look carefully. The moose will offer himself to you. Will walk and then something you're hunting and then the moose comes out and he's like, you're like man. The, the, Wild. it's all like it's all like it's fun to believe in something something greater like yeah that that, that connects us all together with yes, the only yeah. real connection like the real connection i have is when like either i'm fishing but when you are tracking an animal it yeah. gets you like you we are some sort of animals I, I think too but that's the that's for me it's just crazy there's something it's about crazy, the north man. that makes you Something about the north that's just so like um has that feeling of uh it makes you feel small. Yeah, and yeah. just you know, you're in a of... big blanket of stars, you're looking at trees. It's hard that are not to think about something old. bigger. It also makes you realize how bad we steered away from what we're probably supposed to do. Right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, yeah I, feel I, I believe we there's a part where we were made to have this type of life, but now is with everything, AI and all that, I'm not sure like yeah. what's away. gonna go yeah. on. Like so yeah. I think we were truly made to uh, stay connected to the land. For sure. But unfortunately, our, our brains are were made too big, so we were able to yeah. steer away from that connection. Mm -hmm. But I think when you have the chance to really connect with the nature, we're, it's all inside of us. Like yeah. We are some sort of, when yeah. you feel like your goosebumps, in the, when you're living a moment. Oh, those like, first yeah. paddle strokes in a canoe on a protage trip, yeah, you know, like in, the, a, in the morning. like A loon, man. Yeah, yeah, it does something to you. I mean, we <laughs> yeah. ask that like every guest. We always ask, "Why do you fly fish?" And it's usually an intangible answer. It's like I don't know. There's just something in me that I just have to do it. It's something. It gives me something that I can't really describe. You know. Yeah. You know, and it's like that's just kind of like being in these northern places. I feel like as soon as we get up northern Ontario, we're like, it just feels so special. Yeah. It it empties your mind. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you go fish for like four, five, six, eight hours. Mm -hmm. You go back home and you said, "How can it be possible to have thought of nothing?" <laughs> yeah, about like, <laughs> yeah, it is. But that's what happens. Like I, 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 when I think about, it, I'm like, 
you look at your fly, you look at your fly, but you're never thinking about an, an issue you yeah. got back home or something. Yeah. And then you go back home. And, I cleared my mind. I'm ready to yeah. Yeah. ready to do it again. It's yeah. like, you know, you take a you take a step down, you yep. take a swing. Yeah. You know, you're just not <laughs> You don't really think much about much of it's anything. Truly, right? like for the people who never tried it, I mean, they can't understand it. But for for people who have done it day after day after day, yeah, like it's, that's what it does. It's it it like it's yeah. it relieves you from stress because yeah. it's it's kind of simple what huh. we're trying to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's probably a pretty good segue to the movie. Yeah. Before we do that, Justin in the chat says, "Bring flies and flights back." Flies and flights leave. Okay, uh, Rob's gonna bring it back for you there, Justin. So come on, Ju now. Justin. It, it happened already. Also, I will say to everybody here, <laughs> hold the mic a little bit put, back a little bit there, maybe. If, if you if you want to, uh, oh sorry, sorry, oh, sorry, no, sorry. No, if you guys want to cross in front of the camera, don't feel two ways. There's a few more chairs around here. There's a couple chairs course, stacked yeah. up there. Like Tim, please, yeah. my God, Tim tattooed all day long. Yeah, Tim. Yeah, shout yeah. out for Tim. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, round of applause for Tim. <laughs> Amazing <laughs> artist. Applause. Thanks Worked so much, hard, Tim. Yeah, if anybody wants to sit down, there's like a there's another one of these wingback chairs that's just empty oh look at that look at that Some chair my back. god Whoa. another chair here but yeah that, wanna... wool? yeah okay. <laughs> um okay why don't we switch over to the film the which film. will be playing tomorrow in toronto at the film fest but and Europe. you're gonna be at the film fest yeah. tomorrow yeah man another, another... you've had a busy busy schedule man yeah, like in toronto it all yeah. happens like by accident like yeah. i said it's, it's it's funny how stuff can happen sometimes yeah yeah it's actually it's at an awesome uh, it's sold out Tomorrow, Amazing. which awesome, another good community yep. event for for Ontario. There, uh, it's the I F four, of course, yep. hosted at the Review Cinema by yep. Drift Outfitters. There you go. Um, and uh, your film is in it, and I don't want to. Is it pronounced Tunalik? Yeah, Tunalik. Okay, perfect. Yeah, yeah. Tunalik. I was like, really stressed yeah. about that. Yeah, me too. That's why I was just going to say, tell us about your film. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Tunalik. What is Tunalik all about? Yeah, it. it I actually steered away from some, some the complicated version of like bringing a crew and being three or four and filming and being the guy who films. And I, I told my crew and I said, this place, like the guide is Inu and he doesn't speak English. We're not going to be able to communicate. So all we're going to have to do is fish and discover this pristine river, like Reve River. Mm -hmm. So I said, why not change it up and bring my buddy and let's film each other. Okay. So it's we, just the two of you? We love to film, yeah. Oh, my God. You're not going to have a deep story storyline because there's only one other person there. Yeah, right. So <laughs> it's just we, the three of you? Yeah. Oh, wow. So the chances that we had is was to share the camera with my buddy, Renault, yeah. who's a filmmaker also. So uh, the passion was to each have a chance to catch a fish. And you know sometimes when you share the camera and your buddy starts to fish and then he doesn't catch it. Yes. But that place is the crazy like all the dream shots we could do so yeah we we were okay now it's your turn let's do it with a mouse let's do right. it with a dry fly let's do it with a bomber <laughs> no matter what you wanted to do yeah. there's a fish you think we can catch an arctic char with a salmon bomber <laughs> i don't know man okay it's my turn i'll try it and, and then boom man. just magic like just <laughs> just a magical place like we shared the camera we got a lot of shots and i've seen these these crazy trout brook trout like biggest brook trout i've ever seen and uh i also realized like that the that outfitter like he already permitted people to keep those fish and oh we came there and we got we said never again man those <laughs> fish are the yeah. and and thank to god never again yeah. will people be allowed to keep fish over there yeah. oh wow yeah because they realized man i said these fish are so valuable mm -hmm. to, the, to everything it's like the wildest river you can like a wild brook trout, native brook trout, that's five to six, seven pounds. That's crazy. That is like that is the rarest thing yeah, you can find like on earth. Yeah. So don't don't put don't like don't put that those in the team. river. Yeah. If you want to eat one, eat like a Ceron pound trout. Yeah. But it's been it was like sometimes like I had I remember because that story is it, actually this film came about. I had remember like six or seven years ago meeting a guy i said if ever there is an opportunity to go to that place call me and the call was made and he said got a two spots man you there want you to go, go. I there said, you go how much is it yeah, <laughs> and yeah, then, yeah. And that was a lot of money yeah. but then i have good collaborators and then i call yeah. destination indigenous because we know it's indigenous land so yeah. they supported us to uh, just help to pay for That's the awesome. 
for the flights and to yeah. go out there. Because where is it exactly, uh, like on the map? You would go like, uh, let's say you leave from Montreal, you go straight up. Yeah. You know the Angava Bay is like a, yep. it's like a, had a circle. Yeah. Yep. So you would take the circle and just a little bit right. So okay. it, it's it, it's crazy because it's Super just hard. a river that flows randomly from the Angava Bay. When you fly over, you're just looking down and a small river why do the char the salmon and the the trout go up there we don't know yeah, yeah. why that river not the, any you know, we don't know i never there. seen anything like it i never seen a place where the arctic char the atlantic salmon the sea run brookies and the native brook trout cohabit in the same place so yeah. when you're casting a line out there you never know what's going to bite on your line that's cool so the, the film is filled with but you know it's going to be some gnarly fish right it's filled with surprises and just like uh like I said, it's it's not about the the craziest storyline. It's just about the fish. And I just got back to it. Sometimes I'm like, yeah, people are gonna say like storyline is not that good. So, yeah, but there was not anybody else but us. Yeah. And I thought I, if I would have brought a filmmaker who doesn't really like to fish, yeah, he would have just been filming me catching like a lot of fish. Right. And I thought right. that's that's not about. It's about to share that. That's so. And who's the who's yeah. your buddy that you brought along? Renault. Renault. Yeah. So Renault for a lot. He he really he's been working with us for a long time. What's up, Renault? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Renault. Yeah. Renault. And he, he shot another film. It's called Only the Salmon Knows, which is just touring yeah. in the Fly Film Tour. Also, right now we'll be going down to Austin. Uh, uh, next week, the week after, Yilma's in the back there. Yilma and I saw Yilma. that film when we yeah, screened yeah. at the ASF yeah. dinner That's here in the, Toronto. That, yeah, yeah, the big salmon is in yeah. there. It's like, yeah, oh my god. So, I, I just say, like, I'll, I'll, I won't put it on, like, because it's it's also part of this other film, yeah, with the moose, and uh, it's just a cut that is just traveling <laughs> and making more and more. So, right. Renault shot that with us, and Renault actually also uh, directed uh, our first series of hunting on TV. We got a big contract. To, shoot a hunting show and i said yeah we want to do it and oh, he did awesome. that he went to sweden he was like best travel buddy great cinematographer yeah. he's also got another film in the fly film tour called transitions so uh it's the perfect guy man, to enjoy and because you, you if you're going to share the camera you also need to share it with somebody who knows how what he's doing or else your film is going to be only half good so yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you yeah. don't want to see the difference when you're exchanging yeah. the camera so and it was a challenge like let's try to do this on the drone let's yeah. try to do that you know how complicated it can be like mm -hmm. to try to get an eat and uh, try, yeah, to, try to get that. the timing of everything yeah so when you are just in the shooters. total wilderness man it's just like yeah. and we like it was funny because we we connected with with our guide also and we, we showed him how to fly a drone and we, the communication oh, cool. was really hard because Unfortunately, I wish I, I knew how to speak Inu, uh, and we 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 we, we kind of got. Yeah. Yeah, and he was playing a drone, and I was like, yeah, check this out. <laughs> That's so sick. It was just it was cool for that for That's that awesome. trip, and just total wilderness, small little camp, nothing fancy, uh -huh. just a fish and a canoe, and uh, yeah, I say thanks to to Nunavik again, and it ends with with like a nice nice trout I've been looking for 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 a long time, and. Just took the fly. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Yeah, but it, it's really good for like a fly fishing film festival. You Once in a while, you need a film where it's just like yeah. ice fish and pristine water and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. Well, it's inspiring, you know, like it. Uh, I mean, at the end of the day, we all fish because we want to catch fish as much as we say we don't sometimes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And we're like, oh, I do it for all these yeah. other reasons. It's like, no, you don't. <laughs> yeah. no, I, like, I, I yeah. have some films. I, I like. You it's know. funny. I have three films right now touring, but there's one It's just like a storyline where you need to want to watch that. You need to, mm -hmm. to be inclined to want to watch a documentary and that, get all that information. But yeah. usually when you go on a film festival, it's a fine line between both. I was going to say, do you ever yeah. find pressure in like when you're doing an edit to put more, you know, I guess for lack of a better term, fish porn in it? Or do you try to like, what's the balance there yeah, when, you're, it, when you're in the edit room? You're like, this is too much fish, not enough yeah. fish. Yeah, It's a complicated thing because sometimes I say, I know like if I do a film and somebody watches it and say, I'm not sure about that one. I don't, I know me, me too. I know I'm not sure about that one, yeah. but. I mean, it's not that bad, but <laughs> at the end of the day, you never know like what's gonna happen. And the the the, the hardest thing is you, you, like some of your trips, yeah. most of my trips, uh, they are financed. I mean, there's yeah. a client somewhere, there's a sponsor, yeah. yes, there's sure. an outfitter who said, "I need your help, man. I want to show to the world 
how good it is out here. Yeah. So you go up there and you catch nothing. Yeah. What is gonna film gonna be about? So you struggle, you twist and turn, totally, you find yeah. the yeah. people, and then, and then you drop the famous line. Oh, fly fishing is not about catching the fish. It's about <laughs> feeling good in the water. It's not about the fish. No. Come on. Every time I see that film, it yeah. said you didn't catch anything. Yeah, you yeah, had yeah. to say it. Yeah, <laughs> of yeah. course, it's about that. Yeah, but, that's man, fishing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's about being with friends, you know, in, in nature. We loved it. Yeah. But yeah, we already we already had to do that. But it, of course, uh, that's the most complicated thing. We don't control nature, and uh, yeah. it you can hit it right or hit it wrong. But, well, you know, that's what's cool about going to a place like, you know, a uh, Tunalik area, like where you were, you know, fishing that area. It's uh, it's uh, it's just, you know, you're going to have some good fishing, right? It's not highlighted that often. Those types no, of places, the but, north. yeah. Choosing to make a film not about the people, mm. that's a big risk. So that's why we always made it right. about the people, right. the TV show and all that. But when you go for the fish, you say it's for sure. Mm -hmm, yeah. But I, I already hit it really wrong. Like, it's impossible. This place, it's impossible, guys, man. You all should all come. Everybody here, break here, piggy bank. We're going, man, to fucking Tuna Lake. <laughs> and you arrive there, storm, high water. Yeah. Like, right. Yeah, you can't fly. Right. Oh, guys, man. I'm sorry, man. It's a mean, it could be a mean <laughs> yeah. place, right? And you don't necessarily yeah. hit it right. Well, so never, north, you know? never break yeah. your, never break your piggy bank for, for a fishing trip because yeah. it's unpredictable. Yeah. So, yeah. Like, go if you, you yeah. want to, but yeah. there's always the risk factor of, not being able to get to the camp yeah and that the fishing conditions are totally off yeah it's it's that with anything you can't control it oh, that no. would have been a hell of a film if you guys didn't make it up there and you're at the airport like <laughs> shit we still need the film <laughs> just filming each other you know like well it would have been cool <laughs> well you know what there is the there is the palm festival that we we started with uh Samon quebec and yep. it's it's a it's in the province of quebec for local filmmakers and this year, my favorite one is about a guy who exposed himself to the hard work he put in for four years to try to catch a fish. Right. And he never caught one yet. And the film is really good. There is no fish. It's just a hustle. But we all we all understand it. Yeah. So, but it was well. It's well. It's well directed. So. Yeah, yeah. It's not true that a good film needs fish. Yeah. Right. But uh, to make a good film without fish, you need good scripting or there's there's needs to be something that it's well done somewhere right amazing well you can see that film you know tomorrow at, well you can't because it's sold out but if you're going <laughs> have fun it's gonna be sick and you know you know well maybe congratulations maybe somebody will be scalping tickets yeah. mitch will be scalping yeah. tickets our friends <laughs> but of course you know you'll be able to see it if you stop at other uh, destinations along the film tour tour and uh, i'm sure it'll be made available online eventually but uh yeah yeah that's awesome um I to, did you did you ever find it hard you know we when we started up so fly it was all about like you know ontario and you know you get to go to some crazy places so now our show's a lot more about than just ontario but we try to keep it ontario like you and your crew at hooky was like you know it was awesome how much you repped Quebec and Canada too. Like, yeah. I think one of the first, one of my favorite films was when you did that, almost like that cross country road trip. What was that? Was that out? No, yeah, that so was uh, um, along the way. Along the way, yeah. yeah. I, I love that one. That was so cool. And do you ever find it hard being a Canadian? <laughs> in, no man. In the space. No. No man. I love. I love to be a Canadian. I. I think <laughs> I love the logo, man. I love. I love. I love it, man. The red. The. the, it's the Canada is the best, man. Canada, like, and and there is an opportunity for us. I mean, Canadian outdoor clothing brand, born and raised, like French Canadian. I mean, no, it's a. It, if I wasn't born here, I, I would be sad. I'm so close to the wilderness all the time. Yeah. Like my house is in the wilderness. I can go to the slopes. I can go snowboarding. I can go fishing. I can go to the Gaspé. I can take a plane and be like with a polar bear within two hours from yeah, that's home. Pretty awesome. <laughs> so yeah, we can. We need to respect Canada. It's yeah. it's our home, man. It's just crazy place, man. Like uh, thank God, like if people, not a lot of people want to come here. It's good. It's good, man. <laughs> but no, I think I think if Huke would be American, I would I would have maybe more money in my pockets. But I, I wouldn't be the same. Right. It's it's too big, man. It's I I love USA too, but it's huge, man. Yeah. And man. it's not directed and and governed the way I I, I feel it's right to some right. some certain way. But I don't get into that. But Canada is 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 like 
like what would it be like 90 percent wild it's so it's wild man. It's wilderness like, here. i mean look at ontario They're and quebec like so it's wild. a huge land mass with nothing like, in it it's crazy you know and, and don't like yeah there's quebec and but like, I, like ontario is a new place for me it's a new playground and i sometimes you go in shows and you go to like those little booths and they have an outfit and i made so many good me i'm like oh, are you kidding me yeah. <laughs> you got this yeah i've been waiting this like, that's that's what you got up here up north I said cool man so yeah, i want to explore tomorrow and and then you you start to go to winnipeg you start to understand that yeah. bc alberta northwest territories east and coast like yeah. yeah you're not gonna so get much to bothered explore. there yeah. like so yeah. no it's a it's gonna be a it's a pride, man, for sure. The logo, yeah. man, it's yeah. great. <laughs> for sure, it's wicked, yeah. Yeah, no, I, yeah it was always something that yeah. definitely I admired. Okay. Yeah. Canada. You know, Quebec's so supportive of itself, too. Yeah. Or am I Is that right? Am I right in seeing that? Supportive of? Like, <clears throat> I would, would you say French Canada or like Quebec sports, Quebec businesses really well? It yeah, feels yeah. Like, a, like outside the, looking in, it feels yeah, that way, you know? Yeah, the thing is that Hukei is also like, what what happened is that also if you, if you look back into it, I'm I'm actually an entrepreneur. That that's that's I guess that's what my best talent would be. Now I'm a, an adventurer or whatever it would be, but uh, it's a pride for the province. So yeah. we are actually like we brought fishing and hunting into the outdoor space, but we're gonna have like our our, our picture on the cover of the newspaper, yeah. and it's gonna be prime time news to say like thriving Quebec business that loves nature. Yeah. So that that's another thing I I can do a conference <clears throat> conference about fly fishing. But I can also do one about how to build a brand, how to be a business guy, and yep. how to stay uh, authentic. So that's the space that I that I have, and I, I really love that space because w the brand is is about like uh, having success, following your passion. Yeah. So who doesn't like that? Yeah. So I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's why the the province is <clears throat> is our like yeah, the province is our friend. Yeah. And. Uh, it's funny though we're so close by man, and yeah. i'm starting i'm gonna come more and more to ontario and i go back to bc and yeah. you just need to to understand the it's very similar we very gotta similar go, yeah, yeah. we gotta go fishing oh man yeah. like huh? mitch we gotta get mitch mitch loves swinging flies yeah and he loves i'd love to go to the gas he loves bay fishing yeah and he's never been atlantic never salmon go. fishing never you know i invite you man let's roll we're do it let's oh, we gotta roll. take you to yeah, we're gonna go catch big pike up north here yeah yeah, oh, yeah. 100%. yeah and like you made me realize one of my dreams man to, to be in this store and it's crazy and i'm gonna make you catch a salmon man for sure <laughs> you already caught one though no oh no never you yeah yeah i've got a couple yeah, under couple. the belt yeah cool yeah. man thanks to yeah, yeah. Got a little, yeah. yeah. Got a guy. cool man yeah. we're gonna do Actually, that gas bay was the first place i ever went fishing and that was with rob and salmon fishing with rob yeah, yeah. on right. the bonnie i love it oh my god yeah it was what an inspiring place yeah um i was gonna say did anybody here have questions for fred yeah huh yeah, yeah. anything you want to know yeah. or us i know we're kind of putting you on the spot yeah. we didn't really talk about this yeah, before who has a Hello. question <laughs> anybody have a question immediately <laughs> anybody have an immediate question think about that and we'll just yeah mitch actually just a second for context this is our buddy mitch mitch is a filmmaker as well yeah. uh, he has north country media house he's helping us shoot tonight um, maybe Mitch, do you want to take the microphone and ask? Yeah. Just so we have it, you know. Look at this. Just speaking of this logo here. All right. Yeah, stare right into the camera lens. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> so you've been in these like beautiful northern places, and like I, I love the north. And like once you go above the tree line, it's something special. Like what, what did you find special about like the Ngava Peninsula and like that area of Canada or Nunavut? Yeah, it it, Thanks, it comes back always to the same thing, like true wilderness this still exists and it's, it's having where else can you have the impression nobody else set foot there but yeah like you said when you go up and the, you're like on the moon there's places you feel like you're on the moon and uh, it's the tundra and uh, it's amazing like you see when you fly over it like you see like the vegetation just disappear yeah. mm -hmm. then you become like on rock and yeah. the the wildlife that's living in those different segments of the the wilderness it's, it's it's just amazing but it's the air the air the freshness of the air yes you've like so you, you see why i feel so energetic because yeah. the air is pure yeah. it's like people take puffs of good, good air too yeah, yeah but uh yeah the air the the sunsets the northern lights the it's just like you you don't you don't see that in the city it's it's to say like yeah 
to resume it, it would be like a true wilderness where nobody else has ever been, like indirectly, but like yeah. The, the if you step outside the trail and you go like a kilometer, there's a good chance nobody ever stepped foot there. And it's the unpredictability of the weather. Like it can rain, it can be minus ten. Yeah, yeah. It's raining, it's raining, it just started right raining now, right now. So, yeah, it's raining right now. Yeah, yeah, man. Can oh. he, is that cool? You can hear with the skylights? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Can you hear? Because you got the headphones on. There's no, always a connection to the nature here. <laughs> yeah. There you go. It's pretty awesome. It's a sign, man. Yeah. <laughs> Talking love about it. rain and it starts to rain. <laughs> I love it. Um, yeah. yeah. Okay. Well. Have, uh, oh, yeah. Kevin. Kevin is the store manager here at Filson. Will do. Fred, it's so awesome uh, having you here. Um, it's, uh, you know, you're very inspiring, you know, just listening to you talk uh, tonight. Um, you spoke about dreams earlier. Um, and I'm sure, you know, when you, you know, you do your trips, you do a lot of research beforehand. Where's your next big dream place to be around the world? Oh, and that's a good question. I didn't have time love to that. I love that. think about Thanks, it. I, I often book, book spots without uh, reflecting upon it because it feels natural. Yeah. We have to think about where I want to go and haven't been before. I don't know. I think I think I'm I'm embarking on a on a trip that I, I for the first time I feel I'm not sure and it's kind of a dream for me to bring my my kids into oh, this, cool. this total oh, remoteness. Neat. So it's booked. I'm going with my daughter June. She's ten years old. Oh, cool. And ten uh, day adventure, Northwest Territories, bush plane, the whole works. So that that's kind of a dream of me to see before they get like uh, adolescence and don't don't like the parents yeah. anymore. Before they hate you for no reason. Yeah, it's, yeah. and it's yeah. to it's to share that it it was actually like it's actually a sad story, but it it brings to mind that if I it, if I remember it, that trip was to go. My dream was to bring my mom to the yeah to the Northwest Territories, and she she man she she got cancer now, and she she's not gonna be able to come. But yeah, that's that was my dream, buddy. She's gonna survive. I got said uh, breast cancer, but now my daughter's going uh, is going too. But yeah, yeah, it brings back that to mind, and it's to bring the people that I love to the north. Yeah, that's my dream destination. Yeah, I love that. And my daughter is gonna come, and I hope my mom is get gets uh, well, and Same. I can show I her the northern <laughs> lights because uh, I didn't I hadn't think about that. Like uh, if you don't have a, a if you're not healthy, you have nothing. Yeah. Like you, you believe you want money, you want that. But then it got to me when my mom announced before Christmas. Mm -hmm. Like, fuck, man, I didn't think about that. Uh, right. You don't have the the strength to uh, to come with me. Like uh, we can go another time. But yeah, you need you need to be we need to be in shape. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. dream place with uh, with showing your... the north to the people I love. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that's something answer, you always man. say, Mitch. You always want to bring your dad and your brother to these yeah. crazy places. Yeah. Don't wait too long, man. Yeah. Just I'm do trying, it. man. Yeah. They're like, I don't know. I'm like, come on, it's safe. Yeah. Trust me. Yeah. Like, no, yeah. but like me, it's uh, <laughs> she's 72 years old, and I right. could have done it maybe a, a year or two before. Yeah. And I hope it, I'm going to be able to do it. But I, I, I missed it with my grandfather. Yeah. Said so I need to show him the spot, and I got too busy. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Don't forget to do it. That's really yeah. what it's all about. I know yeah. my mom really wants to see a polar bear. Let's go. Yeah. That's... So we should we should we should maybe yeah, be fine. Make, make that there happen. is something yeah. about yeah bringing people. I think my mom might be them. watching right now. So yeah. mom, sure. we're gonna get you a polar bear. <laughs> <laughs> that's good, man. Yeah. Well, it'd be sweet to. We always talked about bringing our moms to a lodge because they don't really fly fish. Yeah. <laughs> just watching them catch like a big bike or something and watching them freak well, my out. mom would get carried off by a bald eagle or something she's a little portuguese lady <laughs> oh, mom but you know it'd be a cool story it'd be a hell of a film yeah, there's the no story right there yeah. that's right you Saving... catch nothing but that happens got a good film yeah big, big birds big birds of north man uh is there anybody else wants to ask a question fred anybody Rob, I'm a kid over here. Get Rob. over here, Rob. This is Rob What's from up, Rob? Uh, yeah. Rob from Drift nice Outfitters. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wherever you want, man. He's supporting the whole like fly fishing scene here. Is great. Yeah, he was so, our yeah. first supporter. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, man. A uh, question is about uh, conservation. Ontario, it seems at times that conservation is almost an afterthought. It's secondary to a lot of things. But you look at a place like Quebec. And there's great regulation. Uh, Sam rivers are controlled by ZEC offices. You know, there's there's uh, closures in terms of uh, temperatures uh, for fish species and uh, non-angling. 
But Ontario doesn't have a lot of that. And uh, the focus is about a shore lunch, about, uh, you know, filling your limit, keeping your limit, putting in your freezer, uh, about consumption. Um, but how would you think it would be the best path forward to adopt some of the Quebec mentalities and regulations? Is it through education? Is it through media? Is it like, what's it, what's the, what's the secret sauce? Like, what's the combination? Man, this Big question. Is, that's a good Thanks, question. Man. because. Mm -hmm. Like, also, nice outfit, yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, nice. <laughs> Just head head. <laughs> I, when I when I it's it's even like the people uh, that came down here in Sweden. How did you? How did Quebec do it yeah. for every river to be protected? For every river to have their little boss and little protection and. It's if you've never been, the, it's a, like the gas pay is amazing. Like every yeah. river has a, basically its own Zec office. Zec employees. President, watching after director. that river. We saw, so, I think, Rob, we fished the Bonaventure, how many, four days, and then the Petit Cascopedia, like three days. We saw a Zach officer every day. That's amazing. 20 minutes yeah. in and you see yeah. one. That's amazing. Yeah. It, it would, if you do it without using like governments and regulations, it's going to be really, really hard because, I mean, it's to, it's to change a whole mentality. Yeah. Yeah. But the Atlantic Salmon, it's been, there for a long time like it's it's a pristine and yeah. you need to keep it safe and people wanted to protect it but so other people couldn't fish it the rich people wanted to protect it so the the concept of protecting w was already there yeah. but like uh for here i think it's 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 been this way for a long time but if you think about it if every river could have its own little management yeah and you'd have to pay rights for every day and th that money would be used to protect it and then yep. you'd, you'd have security on the river but it's a long way to go like there are so many yeah. so many different uh, aspects to it of course it's to lead by example but oh man that's a that's 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 really that's we came out here also and trying to look into it and you see like uh like a uh, hardcore hunting and fishing show that's where you see there is a lot of work to be done just the word conservation probably doesn't exist in some people's vocabulary For yeah. Sure, yeah so that's the first thing is to educate and to show them that if you don't take part in all of this yeah it's like kind of goes away, goes away. Right, <laughs> it's like people say i can't wait for the government to change the regulation i'm tired of killing 12 walleye every time i go fishing yeah it's like, like buddy man <laughs> That's not the way to go. Yeah, you yeah, don't, yeah. Have, you don't to. have to kill them. Yeah, but that's the rule. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. The, you don't have to obey the, the yeah. limits. Like yeah. everybody work together. It's like I can't wait till the tags go down so I don't have to kill my two deer. I'm starting to, to kill smaller deer every year. <laughs> so it's as a com it's, it's not has working, a, yeah. It's yeah. as a community. Yeah. And like it's it's and it's uh, I it's a big one. Yeah, man. It's a, I, it's a movement. You need yeah, a movement. Uh, we, like you maybe, know. maybe that maybe it's to start by the one. Like, yeah. is there a river that could be only fly fishing and yep. that 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 could lead yep. by example? And I think then, we can all think of one. Yep. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I for sure. Like, like I couldn't imagine. Like the 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 way it is. Like I'm not I'm not, I'm not telling it's not well done because I don't want to get into that. But if if it would be man, if the Atlantic salmon fishing world would be the way you, it is here with the set pin and everything yeah. man like yeah, the, the, the fishery would have lost its it's it's like yeah it's authenticity it, it wouldn't make sense anymore yeah. so it, it's also to say like uh what it, what is the the culture behind uh, ca catching those fish that come out of the great lakes yeah can it change or is it's it's always been like it's a stock fish we don't give a fuck or <laughs> like there's a lot of pro oh. process to be there's a lot of thought to be put into that, but of course it's to be more and more people like us. And yeah. it's like I said, I so. even though it's one person, it, like there's, yeah. if, if I have one guy who came to my boot and he says, man, because of you, I, I start to release my fish and I want to be a guide. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's great. Of cool. course there's 10,000. Step in the right fish, direction. Though. But yeah. I mean, one, one little yep. step at a time yep. might but uh, it's, yeah. it's too much of a big thing. Like I totally understand, but yeah. I'm like, whoa, man. Yeah. yeah. Like, where do we start? And the... you start with what you can control. The, it's just... easy to uh, to. It was easy for us to install catch and release because uh, the the fish is so beautiful. And yeah. you, 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 when you keep a fish, you need to remember you need to go put it in a cold or something or whatever. Like you stop fishing. You, yeah. you don't want to stop fishing first of all. Mm -hmm. And second of all, like that fish is, is really important. So yeah. it's also 
sometimes maybe the mentality be behind a stockfish yeah you, you lose that that respect but it still yeah. deserves respect it's it's it doesn't it, it created a whole ecosystem of, of passionate of people fishing for them yeah, yeah. yeah i mean i could spend a whole podcast on my thoughts on stocked fish and they get they get uh, they get a bad they didn't stock themselves is my well, point <laughs> isn't isn't like uh, the whole uh, south america some sort of a stock trout well uh, that's what i'm saying like directly I mean, it, we <laughs> yeah. we call we call you know brown trout up here wild and they certainly have been naturalized yeah. but they this doesn't seem like germany or scotland to me like yeah. you know they came here from somewhere that fish has got some respect i feel like you know Without getting too much into it, because this, this could be a big topic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How many years does it take for it to be wild? I know. You know exactly. Yeah, yeah. There, there is, yeah, there is. You're right. Respect. A limit between true wild and yeah. half wild, but we talked. We spent yeah. the first half of the show talking all about how much nature means to us on an emotional, spiritual level. Mm -hmm. To then just, you know, not respect it, you know, it yeah. just doesn't make any sense. So I feel like, but how do you change those perceptions? And you know, good question. Well, uh, yeah, lead by example, bit at a time, yeah. one step at a time, yeah. and expect that the the earth uh, is still uh, in good shape enough to. Uh, well, the earth Gives is always going to rehabilitate itself. Well, the earth will be fine. Yeah. It's a matter of us, yeah. Um, awesome. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, I think that's like a good show right there. I mean, again, like you can see Tunelik in the film fest and uh, the IF four and. Um, uh, and uh, yeah, Fred, thanks so much for coming on. Yeah, and thanks, down. guys. Man. It's this been yeah. it's been great having you here. Like, yeah. I mean, we met, like I said, in 2017, I want to say, because yeah. it was before we went up to Attawapiskat. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> For the first yeah, time. He, he, we always uh, we were wearing like, the outside by the river yeah. hats. Oh, we yeah. almost have the same, uh, <laughs> the same age of business. Yep. Yeah. 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 Goes by. We celebrate. It's, it's cool right. being fellow Canadians. Yeah. Like, you know, that's always Big time. really, really yeah. fun when we can you know, yeah. be inspired by other Canadians and, yeah. and that's definitely it. Um, we're going to pick some raffle prizes. Yes, we are. Yes, we are yeah. Uh, so I might ask, Kevin? I'm going to ask for the raffle tickets, but before, but as that's happening, Fred, you've got a few films out. You've got a few, uh, you know, you got a few content like TV shows. Where can people find Hook A? Where can people find your show just while we're getting those raffle yeah, tickets? Best, the best way to go about it is uh, hook.ca. And then you just yep. look at our YouTube channel, everything, and start an Instagram account in 2021. So there you go. <laughs> can watch it too. It's called Fish Hunt Plant. Awesome. You can Fish check Hunt it out Planet there. Yeah. Yeah, we'll put links to that stuff in the show notes yeah. after the fact as well. Uh, yeah. But yeah. Should we get? Do you want to come here and, Is it and do this time? with us? Do this with us? Yeah, yeah. Oh. Here, 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 here. You sit here. Here, you sit here. No, I, no, Mitch, you stay. Just push over, buddy. No, here's the crazy thing about doing a live podcast. I got to go to the bathroom. <laughs> There's more stuff in here, too. Okay, and sweet, sweet, box, right. sweet. Because I think you were the... You're, well, introduce yourself, first of all. Hi, everybody. I'm uh, Colt. I work at Filson. I do <laughs> uh, some events planning with Allie. Um, so, yeah, it's been great to have you guys here today. Thanks for coming in. Yeah, thanks. And uh, yeah, Cole has been the raffle master. Uh, these all the money that from the from you know uh, the tattoos that Tim was doing, these these raffle tickets we were selling, uh, it's all going to the Ontario River Alliance, which is awesome. Um, talk about changing culture. Then there's a group doing it here. Um, they remove dams. They they take care of our streams and and they're a wicked organization uh but we got a few sweet Ooh. prizes uh hopefully somebody who's in the audience is winning these but people have been buying these all day long as the store has been open i just want to say we have been raising quite a lot of money so i'm really happy for everyone that's uh, put into the raffle bought some stickers some posters got tattooed today thank you guys so much couldn't have done this all without you guys so. oh awesome couldn't have done this without you so you. since you are here Maybe we'll get uh, you to do it, but what should we raffle off first? What about, what's the sweet vest all about, Fred? Yeah, it's a fly fishing vest uh, we invented. Sweet! And, uh, yeah. It's yeah. You can wear wicked. it like a travel vest, too. Oh, yeah, for sure. You just look like a fisherman. <laughs> <laughs> Mitch is wearing it right now. Yeah. He looks pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, he looks I love it. I wear it all the time. Alrighty. Uh This one sounds good. All right. 33 Levi Griffith. Yo, Levi, yeah. and he's here. Oh my God, that makes it so much cooler. Good, man. 
I, I was talking to him. He's fly fisherman. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Levi That's actually it, drove yeah. all the way from the Niagara region. That's it. Yeah, yeah. I saw a big brown trout he caught. <laughs> well, that's going to get some use. Yeah. Yeah, that's going to get some use. Levi, hopefully the weather's not so bad for your drive home. Damn. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. All right. Well, we got a couch here. So. <laughs> <laughs> Levi, you're sleeping here. <laughs> Okay, 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 okay. Well, this one fell out, so why don't we just do this one? Yeah. Okay. Let's see, let's see, let's see. <laughs> and this will be for, why don't we do, you want to do your, what's this? What's going on so, here, Cole? Yeah, so we kind of have uh, a little kind of gift set to go with it. Uh, I believe it's the hoodie, the water bottle, and this lovely ice tote. Oh, amazing. Um, yes. Yeah, so we will be raffling that off right now. Um, hoodie, whoever wins, just let me know your size. We'll run, we'll switch it out. No issues there. Um... Yeah, so let's see who we got. Let's you got in your hand there, brother. Let's do this. Number 26, and that is Kieran Subrian. Uh, Kieran, guess here. we're shipping that one out. That looks like we're <laughs> sending an email tonight. Okay, <laughs> beautiful, wicked. Fred, why don't you pick one? Yeah, what's the next one? Why don't we do this? the Yeti? Yeah, yeah. What's, what's going on oh, with that? Yeah, yeah. yeah, what's going on? That? What's this, friend? This is a nice Yeti, like you call it the loadout box. And oh, you can sweet. put all your gear, heavy duty, you can run over it with your truck, but you never lose anything. And when, like me, I have a bigger one, but like, let's say you're, you're, you're used to losing stuff, put this in your truck, put all the essentials in there, undestructible. So, boom. Yeah. Perfect. So, that's a sweet prize. Yeah. Oh, I picked it already. Didn't even realize it. Hey. Oh, sweet, 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 sweet. <laughs> 31. Thanks, 31. Yeti, for sporting. Thanks, Yeti. Yeah. These two, Craig Rowe is Craig. Craig Rowe. Oh, <laughs> that's a great prize. Enjoy. Yeah. Oh, it matches the fit today. That's awesome. Oh, dude, that's awesome. You can put your stuff in it because it's raining. <laughs> Here, take some. <laughs> <laughs> that's wicked. Tim, why don't you pick when you tattoo today? Oh, uh, yeah, Tim, you're up. In fact, is that we're giving that away, right? I believe we are giving that flash sheet away. Okay, yeah. so let's give Tim's. This is Tim's flash sheet from all the tattoos. I, I got a tattoo today. Mitch, you got the ducks. Yeah. I got the oh, trees. Yeah. Yeah. Some beautiful stuff on there, so I'm pretty happy. Let's cool. See. Just keep the microphone in your face. Oh, there. Yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, yeah, okay. <laughs> I'm new to this. Uh, beautiful. So, is there a Nick Kennedy in the audience? Oh, yeah. Nick. 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 Nick is. Oh, yeah. He left quite a long time ago. Nick Nick did get the fished out tattoo, which is the, a duck who's broken his fly, his fly rod, which is kind of Nick's whole mentality. Yeah, that's, so, it actually that's really what he works said. out. That's why he got it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, congrats, Nick. That's awesome. Beautiful. He'll hang that up for sure. Oh, Maybe yeah. in the bar. <laughs> he also bought one today. So double down. He bought yeah. a one print? One for home, one for the bar. Yeah. <laughs> that's how much he liked it. Oh, that's perfect. That's perfect. Perfect. Beautiful. Mitch, you come pick one, buddy. Oh, uh, man. He always wins something. He always wins something. Um, how about this next one? Uh, Reddington is obviously we're on Team Reddington. Uh, they donated a Reddington Rise Reel. And a Rio Gold 5-weight. It's like a 5-6, uh, but uh, this, you can use this on your 5-weight. Uh, but yeah, it's an awesome reel. Um, it's in the olive colorway. It's right here in front of me. Oh, Boom. Yes. Uh, and you get a line to match. Uh, and then you can go to Drift Outfitters and buy some backing. <laughs> yeah. Rob will spool it personally. All right. Uh, so um, we have a double. Uh oh. So that looks like Nick Kennedy. We're, no, 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 we're no, 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 no. He's it, no. We're gonna do, do another one. Sorry, Sorry Nick. yeah, you already won one we today. Know, we know Nick. It's okay. It's okay. He's fine. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I was freaking out over here. Yeah, you'll see it in the podcast. Yeah. Oh God. Oh God. Yeah, there. You'll see that sweat glisten right off the camera there. That's so awesome. amazing. Uh, we have Scott, number one. Uh, Scott Hamill in the audience today. Okay, Scott. Well, we're, so Scott's gonna gonna get a reel sent to him. That's great. Yeah, excellent. And an email tonight. Perfect. Okay, sick, sick, sick. Craig, you won something. You you get to pick one. Yeah, yeah. Well, the next one will be uh, we got a we got a Reddington Wrangler XL kit. That's like a six weight streamer chucker kind of rod. So that's the rod, reel, the line, everything. Basically, you just need some a fly and some water. Huh? Excellent. And. We are giving that one away to uh, Jeremy Cleveland. Uh, I don't think he's in the audience right now. Uh, so I will be shooting you an email, Jeremy. Uh, you won. Oh, right on. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. 
All right. Then we got some other things from Hook A. Maybe we do, you want to do the toque and the flask and yeah. the fly box? Yeah, and then, yeah, let's do this little one Hook prize. A. One prize. Sweet. And a beer. Hold on. You got to draw one now. Oh, yeah? Okay. You got Eh. <laughs> I'm sure this is really exciting for everyone watching the live stream. <laughs> that everyone's dropped off. Never mind. <laughs> I was like, this show's over. <laughs> Can we get a thumbs up in the chat? Thanks, guys. Oh, uh, wicked. So, John Clip. John oh, Clip. Oh, John. Yeah. John Clip. John Clip, uh, for those that uh, know, also hosts events with us, and he has an awesome business yeah. called Affinity Fish. All indigenous caught. Uh, Wild Ontario fish. If you're watching yeah. this, go get some affinity. And they fish. have a store here in Toronto. Oh yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, I know you don't have any time, but it would be cool to check out. Yeah. And that's on the corner of the yeah. Bass and Brock. <laughs> yeah. So that's awesome. Where do you go, John? That's uh, you get this little. We'll, we'll bring it to John. We'll bring it to John. Jordan. Jordan is a guide here in Southern Ontario. We do a lot of work with uh, Jordan uh, from educational days to events, and also we just fish with him because he's awesome. Um, Jordan, why don't you come? He's graciously given a fully guided day what <laughs> for what what for what kind of guided day anything they want or bass or what's yeah, really just whatever they want whatever they're feeling oh sweet a just a wow. day so it could be for trout it could be for bass <laughs> yeah we're gonna yeah <laughs> i would draw another name then <laughs> <laughs> nick nick goes with jordan all the time yeah, 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 just so everyone knows nick bought a ton of tickets today so <laughs> yeah <laughs> Nick's gonna watch this and be like, "You guys, what the?" He's like, "I can't believe you guys did this to me." Uh, well, we'll take, we'll take, we'll, we'll Nick. We're gonna go fit. We're go. We'll take it fishing with Jordan. Don't worry. Oh, beautiful. So I know this gentleman's gonna enjoy it. Uh, Brody Ward. I know he's not in the audience right now, but uh, congratulations. Yeah, that's great. That is one hell of a prize. <laughs> if anybody deserves it, this guy's great. Love you, Brody. I think that's. I think that's everything. Yeah, that's wicked. That would be yeah. That would be it. That'd be it. So yeah, no thanks. Obviously, thanks for everybody coming out. We uh, you know, thanks to Filson. Um, obviously, Fred. Thanks yeah, for thanks it was just such a busy weekend for you. Like, and then uh, hopefully, you know, the sold out screening tomorrow is going to be a great time. So I know some people here are probably going to that. I'm assuming. Um, yeah, what a wicked little you know weekend. So yeah, thanks for driving all that way and taking your time. Thanks, Fred. It was I awesome. flew. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Somebody else drove. No, no. Thanks, man. It's great. It's so great. Yeah. yeah, it's wicked. And thanks, Jordan, for the prize. And obviously, all of our supporters like Reddington for the prize and whatnot. And uh, thanks for coming out. Yeah. yeah. That's a wrap. Yeah. Party time. Thanks, dude. Yeah. Awesome, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is like a studio. This is like a perfect set. Yeah. Where's Kevin? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Kevin, oh, nice. Kevin, this set is like it's awesome. So man. many times I was like <laughs> just like trying to remind myself, fuck, we're in Toronto and like you know, some we're filming a couple episodes of the voice after this. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh, and there are uh, stickers, lots of stickers. There's like Reddington stickers, okay, stickers, take stickers, 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 stickers. Uh, we're going to be hanging out for a bit if you guys want to chit-chat and stuff, And uh, but we're going to start cleaning this up. But thanks again, everybody. Sorry, Nick. Sorry, Nick, but don't worry. We, we got you, buddy. <laughs> we got you. No, 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 no. Bye, everybody.